It is now time for me to turn over the hosting duties for the next hour to Patrick Dupu, Managing Director and Senior Partner, Head of Africa. Patrick will be leading us in the next important session, the official launch of the UN Global Compact's new Africa strategy. Hello, Patrick, welcome. Hello, Tulu, uh, and thank you for the kind words. Uh, as you said, uh, the Boston Consulting Group had the privilege to uh, work alongside the UNGC team to craft the overall UNGC strategy, but in particular, and we'll talk today uh, about Africa, the strategy for Africa. So today we can expect uh, a strong sense of support to the UN Global Compact from several African leaders. Uh, and um, from the public, from private sector, we heard this morning um, the support, strong message of support from His Excellency President Kenyatta, and we'll uh, hear more today. We can ex also expect clarity and vision with the presentation of the new Africa strategy, and we can expect commitment to make it happen and help advance corporate sustainability in Africa. This is our collective ambition promoting uh, responsible business practices in support of the SDGs, taking into account uh, the specifics of Africa, the priorities of Africa, of the continent. But we need the full commitment of government leaders and business leaders. And this is what we will be hearing uh, in the next minutes. So let me introduce our two first speakers. Uh, His Excellency uh, Yemi Ozibanjo, Vice President of Nigeria, uh, a champion of social justice initiatives and an emeritus ambassador for the environment in Lagos. And this is obviously a very important support for UNGC, not only because Nigeria is the largest population, largest economy of Africa, but also because the UNGC Africa hub will be based in Abuja uh, in, the, in the next years. And uh, just following, we will be listening to USG Christina Duarte, Special Advisor on Africa to the UN Secretary, Secretary General. But uh, I would now leave the floor to uh, His Excellency um, Vice President Ozi Banjo. Okay. It is my very special pleasure to join you for the launch of the UN Global Compact Africa Strategy, the Decade of Action for Sustainable Development Goals, is a historic opportunity to realize our vision for a more resilient, inclusive, and prosperous Africa. Making our aspirations a reality, however, will require an unprecedented degree of cooperation and collective action across all actors of society governments, civil society, and of course, the private sector. Now is the time for the African private sector to scale up its contributions to the continent's economic and social transformation. As the African Continental Free Trade Agreement enters into force, African businesses have a historic opportunity to embrace sustainability and be part of the collective effort to build a more sustainable and inclusive future. At the same time, sustainable business models and investments guided by the SDGs will unlock an estimated one trillion US dollars for responsible businesses in Africa by 2030. The new UN Global Compact Africa strategy comes at a crucial time. With its global multi-stakeholder network and its unparalleled thought, leadership, and expertise, the United Nations Global Compact is uniquely positioned to play a vital role in mobilizing the African private sector for the SDGs. I'd like to express my full support for the new Africa strategy, particularly for its focus on SMEs, youth and women, and to ensure that no one is left behind as our, on our journey towards achieving sustainable and inclusive development. In the spirit of the SDGs, which seek to promote economic growth, social inclusion, and environmental protection, engaging the rapidly growing youth population through jobs and opportunities must remain a central priority of African governments. 
as we tackle the issues of climate change and embark on collectively transitioning to a net zero global economy, it's important to underscore the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities. Nigeria looks forward to the establishment of new global compact Africa hub in Abuja next year, which will coordinate and drive the implementation of the strategy on the continent. I take this opportunity to urge all companies operating in Africa to seize this moment and drive ambitious SDG actions throughout their operations and supply chains, guided by the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact on Human Rights, Labor, Environment, and Anti-Corruption. I also call on all companies across Africa to engage more deeply as a strong and positive influence on society and leverage their resources and innovation and investments to advance the global goals and create the Africa that we want. I look forward to continuing to work closely with the UN Global Compact in implementing this ambitious strategy only by working together across governments, the private sector and civil society, can we pave the way for a stronger, more equitable and more inclusive world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. These are obviously very strong words and a very strong commitment uh, and endorsement of UNGC from, uh, as I said, Africa's largest uh, economy. So let me turn now to um, uh, USG Christina Duarte, a Special Advisor of Africa to UN uh, Secretary General. Over to you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to start by congratulating the UN Global Compact for the launch of their Africa strategy, which will be a fundamental tool to accelerate the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals during the, the, this decade of action. The SG conceptual framework is a break from traditional development thinking. It not only puts together economic, social, and environment goals. It is structured to promote collaboration between involved stakeholders, not competition. In fact, SDG six, uh, 17 calls for strengthening the means of implementation of Agenda 2030 and revitalizing the global partnership for sustainable development through multi-stakeholder partnerships, public-private partnerships, and civil society partnerships. By talking about partnerships, the 2030 Agenda is asking us to approach the private sector as something more than a mere provider of financing. And allow me to underscore this point, because we cannot move from a situation in which African countries are dependent on ODA to another in which they are dependent on private funding. In fact, the mobilization of private sector investment is not happening at the required scale. For example, in 2018, the private sector financial commitment to Africa's infrastructure was only 11% out of all the commitments made. Private investments in the infrastructure of developing countries were lower than they were in 2012. So instead of decreasing, the financing gap continues to increase. How should we engage the private sector then? Through two principles. First, by acknowledging that there is a set of intangible assets that belong to the private sector's DNA and are strategic to accelerate the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Efficiency, productivity, global reach, and technological innovation. Second, by embracing the idea of conscience capitalism, a notion 
that turns away from the neoliberal conception that the primary obligation of firms is to create profit for their shareholders and upholds instead that companies have a broader responsibility to all their stakeholders, including local communities, employees, and others. And the 2019 Business Roundtable Declaration has been considered a turning point in this direction. Someone opened the door. Let's grab the opportunity. This new conception acknowledged the importance of adopting social responsibility as contribution towards sustainable development and the United Nations principle of leaving no one behind. Social responsibility should not be understood as charity, are two different animals. Indeed, the private sector has started to realize that business cannot succeed and drive in a failing world. And this new approach represents a huge opportunity for Africa. Because African countries, as suppliers of raw materials and consumers of manufactured goods, are one of the main stakeholders of big corporations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the 23rd and 2063 agendas are frameworks that aim to solve the world and Africa's problems. In the private sector language, problems are opportunities for business. Therefore, under this new approach of conscious capitalism, the SGs and the African Union aspirations should be considered by the private sector as a framework of investment projects with an added value since they seek to address all the needs of business stakeholders. However, these business opportunities have different levels of risks attached to them. Is the risking, I would like to repeat, is the risking is the magic word. And defining a strategy to achieve the risking in Africa becomes a key step. The risking involves much more than buying insurance. It requires a fairer and better participation of African countries in global value chains, as well as in terms of Africa's marginalization from international finance markets. It also calls for African countries to create a conducive business and invest investment climate through supportive governance structures, transparency and accountability, competition policy, hard and soft infrastructure, instruments that foster healthy, commercially sustainable markets. The risking needs a commitment by the private sector to uphold and demand these good governance measures, to push for the adoption of transparency pacts between governments and the private sector, for fighting illicit financial flows, promoting the creation of decent jobs, investing in science, research, and innovation, integrating sustainable inclusive and integrated approaches into their business models. And it finally requires, from an Africa domestic perspective, the adopt adoption of integrated national financing frameworks linked to planning, programming, budgeting, and evaluation systems that approach the private sector as an SDG stakeholder. Let us take the opportunity of the turning points that the Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063 and the new notion of conscious capitalism represent to think out of the box and to understand that the private sector and African governments have a common interest, the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals 
in order to leave no one behind. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, an African proverb reminds us, if, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Regarding SDGs and 2063 aspirations implementation, my own alteration to this proverb would be to say, if you want to go wide, work with governments. If you want to go deep, work with non-government organizations and civil society. If you want to go fast, work with the private sector. But if you want to go far and you want it to last, work with all of them together. I'm confident that the new Africa strategy of the UN Global Compact will help us advance in this direction. I thank you very much for the opportunity. Back to you, Patrick. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sando Jambo, the CEO and Executive Director of the United Nations Global Compact. And it is my pleasure to introduce the UN Global Compact's new Africa strategy. Looking to the future, our agenda must respond to the incredible opportunity that African nations hold for the business sector. With 1.3 billion people and a combined GDP of $3.5 trillion, Africa is the world's biggest growth market. It is youthful, geographically vast, culturally diverse, and resource rich. Now more than ever, African businesses are primed to play a pivotal role in the corporate sustainability movement. Together, we can realize the aspirations for a prosperous, thriving, sustainable, and resilient Africa. We have an ambitious agenda with business at the center, from large multinational corporations to small and medium-sized national enterprises, our Africa strategy emphasizes the Global Compact's 10 principles. We believe in doing right by the environment, labor, human rights, and anti-corruption will serve to drive competitive advantage and commercial success for business. But this cannot be done alone. We will work in close partnership with business associations, financial institutions, governments, civil society, and the United Nations. The Africa strategy is guided by three interlocking objectives. First, to grow the UN Global Compact's impact through focus. Focus on the issues and programs most relevant to African companies. Focus on ensuring the leading pan-African and national companies participate. Focus on the geographic reach of our local networks. Second, to drive inclusive impact. Inclusion of all companies, large and small. Inclusion of all geographies, far and wide. Inclusion of all sectors, emerging and legacy. And third, to leverage associations, supply chains, and sources of capital. Leverage associations for their collective affiliations. Leverage supply chains for their holistic coverage of value creation. And leverage sources of capital for their power to influence good practice. Our strategy places the Global Compact's 10 principles at the center. They are our DNA. And they cover human rights, labor, the environment, and anti-corruption. Our work in Africa will focus on advancing these principles. They are a vehicle through which we can drive change and contribute towards business resilience. Given Africa's unique context, we've developed a strategic offering that focuses on the issues most relevant to businesses in Africa. Expressed through the lens of the Sustainable Development Goals, these issues of focus include gender equity, decent work and economic growth, climate action, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and partnerships. Our programs will focus on these areas, and through them, we will enable the private sector to impact poverty, hunger, health, and education. We will continue to engage broadly across Africa, no matter which sector, geography, or company size. To achieve this, we will establish a regional hub in Nigeria and expand the number of local networks across the continent. Our local networks in Africa will be equipped to create richer experiences for our business participants, foster partnerships with key actors, and promote policy engagement on a local level. 
This approach will help ensure that our efforts speak to the African context. I'm particularly thankful to the numerous stakeholders who have informed our Africa strategy. Businesses, global multinationals, the participants of our 10 African local networks, and others, including the Global Compact Government Group. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an ambitious strategy for the Global Compact in Africa. We will work together with all stakeholders, companies, civil society, government, and the UN system. Let us jointly raise our ambitions on what the private sector can collectively achieve in Africa. Thank you very much. And now let me turn it back to Patrick. Thank you, Sanda. Thank you for the great, uh, the great words, the great presentation. And using uh, Christina's words, uh, we certainly hope this new strategy will allow us to go both wide, deep, fast, and more importantly, to go far. So let me introduce our three panelists. Uh, we are very excited to have CEOs of some of Africa's most remarkable uh, companies, three exceptional leaders who have been supporting uh, corporate sustainability even, even before ESG uh, became standard corporate practice, I would say, or at least uh, really became as a, as a CEO level topics. Uh, so we will have here today uh, Puti uh, Maya Niele Dabengwa, who is a South Africa CEO of Napsters, uh, Africa's largest media company. We have with us uh, Mark Kutifani, CEO of Anglo American. Uh, you know, I can tell you that most mining companies use Anglo American as the benchmark when defining their, defining their ESG strategy. So I'm sure that. Uh, we owe you a little bit of that to you, Mark. And uh, Arnaud Lages, uh, CEO of IBL, the number one group in Mauritius and among Africa's largest groups. So thanks for uh, joining us today, and I'm sure we'll have a great discussion. So let me start with you, uh, Puti. Um, you represent a very large uh, invest investment company, and investors and shareholders around the world are more and more interested in uh, sustainability. And um, obviously, this is something that over the last couple of years has grown tremendously. So as an investment expert, uh, what op opportunity do you see for African businesses to leverage SDGs and the 10 principles to drive more investments uh, across Africa? Thank you very much, and greetings um, to, to my fellow panelists as well. It's an honor to be part of this distinguished group uh, participating in the launch of the UN Global Compact Africa Strategy 2021-2023. May I say that involving the youth as partners in the Africa Strategy is both commendable and a much-needed initiative. To make youth part of the solution through Generation Unlimited, as we heard from Nadi just uh, now, and to include them in holding businesses accountable to the principles of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is essential. And so coming to your question, I think certainly business cannot thrive unless people and planet are thriving. At NASPERS, we are fully aligned with the UN's assertion that corporate sustainability starts with a company's value system and a principles-based approach to doing business. Our strategy is founded in connecting people to each other and the wider world and creating value by improving the lives of people. To do this, we must not only act within the bounds that govern human rights, labor, the environment, and anti-corruption, as highlighted by the 10 principles, but we need to embed the values behind these principles into the very fabric of our corporate culture. At a group level, we believe that our most meaningful contribution through our business and operations to enable the SDGs are gender equality, through our diversity and inclusion initiatives. Secondly, decent work and economic growth through our various businesses and societal initiatives in the communities that we operate in, in all of the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Industry innovation and infrastructure through AI, innovation and cyber resilience. And of course, climate action through our emissions reduction initiatives. We believe that great innovation and tech talent is found in Africa. And with the right financial backing and support, these businesses can provide solutions to local challenges that can improve the lives of ordinary people. And whilst the pandemic has tragically impacted the lives and livelihoods of many people, and as we know, the discretionary income of consumers has also been adversely impacted, the acceleration to online platforms can bring with it innovation and creativity and new opportunities for consumers and the insurance industry. 
In the last few weeks, we've announced investments in a number of businesses, including two separate insure tech businesses, Naked Insurance and Control, through our early stage tech investment vehicle, uh, Naspers Foundry. The business models of these insure tech companies have made short-term insurance more accessible, affordable, and convenient to consumers. And so at the heart of the 2030 agenda is the notion that collective action can ensure no one is left behind. We believe that technology is the key enabler to collective action. Technology can transform our economies, create jobs, boost growth, and make possible the transition to a more sustainable and equitable society. Digital transformation is nascent in South Africa and Africa more broadly, and we believe it will form a fundamental part of the future economic growth of the country and continent. It provides tools that enable the kind of education and skills that generations are, require in order to create sustainable jobs, and especially for the large and growing youthful population. We are also encouraged by the increases in technology investment and funding that we have recently seen. And so from a business perspective, we're deliberate in choosing to support local entrepreneurs who are using digital technology to address the everyday needs of their communities around them. By investing in local entrepreneurs, we enable them to access financial and non-financial support. Moreover, we stimulate the economic and social development of the local communities and jobs are created and businesses gain strong partners for their journey. This not only aligns to SDGs 1 and 4, but it creates value for all of our stakeholders, thereby creating circular positive impacts. This is where the value lies, in broadening your definitions of returns to include impact and aligning your social goals, your social goals with your business strengths. Thank you. Thank you, Buti. Very interesting. So let me turn to uh, Mark. Uh, Mark, I remember our BCG's first partner meeting a few years ago was in Cape Town, uh, the first one in Africa, I mean. Uh, and you came and delivered a very inspiring speech, uh, telling, uh, actually mentioning corporate sustainability and as, as a, a priority topic for your organization. I would like to talk about supply chains now, because you've been a as I said, a bit of a leader in the industry around the ESG. So how do you do to bring sustainability practices to your suppliers, third party uh, partners, uh, and make sure, you know, what we call scope three in the climate, how do you make ESG scope three and make sure that these sustainability practices are being applied all across the value chain? Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Uh, firstly, uh, again, acknowledging my colleagues on the panel, and certainly Putis a hard act to follow. Uh, I would have to say I acknowledge her <coughs> great speech and, and the positions that she took. One thing I would say, or a couple of opening remarks I'd make, is that in today's world, great companies, as measured by the time that they've survived and prospered, uh, like an Anglo-American, 104 years, you don't get to deliver that type of longevity or sustainability unless you really are adding value to society in the broadest sense. And I think that when we talk about the SDGs, we talk about companies doing business in a sustainable way, it is always useful to look back at those companies that have survived and grown and, and are doing more today. And that, that consistent thread is that they saw more than shareholders as being groups that required something from the business. If we don't create value for society in its broader sense, we have no future. And I think that's a really important point to make and it's something we reinforce in a continuous way. And as a company in Anglo-American, in thinking about what the future looks like for us, we redefined our purpose, and that purpose is reimagine mining to improve people's lives. It's about thinking about the second 100 years. What does mining have to look like? And we've gone from being a mining company to a metals and minerals company, and that defines what our customers see from us in terms of delivering products. 
And we now talk about being a material solutions company, which then picks up the concepts of circular economy. And it's not simply about digging a hole. It's about a partnership with the community. It's about understanding needs of society. It's about reducing energy footprints. It's about reducing water footprints. It's about reducing physical footprints. It's about delivering all the products we need to make society work in a way that connects with all of our stakeholders, whether they be shareholders, employees, local communities, broader governments and society in its broadest sense. In looking at supply chains, I guess the advantage we have is we have that global footprint and so when we look at the work that we're doing, the advantage we have at being global is that we're able to look at global supply chains and we understand sourcing of raw materials from a range of different uh, locations and in particular how we can maybe help our local communities be part of those supply chains. And so that's the most significant change we can make in terms of our local communities is understanding how to marry the, the breadth and understanding we have of global supply chains and connecting that with our local communities and, and looking at how we can encourage local procurement, local procurement practices, how we can provide um, critical mass and leverage in terms of our spends with our local communities to try and get that balance between um, the, the global supply chains and the local communities. And then understanding how um, materials flow, understanding logistics, understanding where each of our products come from, and then taking a stand in terms of whether it's human rights, whether it's ethical business practices, whether it's um, energy efficiency or looking at carbon generation, all these things are important considerations in everything we do. It's not something we do um, adjacent to or as another issue that we manage. It's integrated in terms of our local processes, in terms of our regional procurement and, and uh, the way we set up our infrastructure on a regional basis, working with regional governments, working with businesses in those areas to ensure that if we invest in water or energy or transportation or internet infrastructure, communications infrastructure, education, health facilities, we're connecting with locals, regionals, federal agencies trying to create an infrastructure that works for those communities. And at the end of the day, us being able to track our processes through scope one, scope two, and ultimately scope three, how do we uh, play our part in creating green steel? How do we play our part, for example, uh, we've designed and we're building the world's largest hydrogen-powered truck and we've put to the South African government a different energy strategy where we're looking at wind power in the West Coast, wind power in the East Coast, solar energy around the Northern Cape, connecting that into the ESCOM grid and then using that renewable power to generate hydrogen that we can put in the trucks that replaces diesel. So at the end of the day, as a global company, we're trying to bring that global understanding, expertise and financial capacity to help and create something that works for our local communities. And ultimately, if we can't do it right for our local communities and regions and then federal, then we don't have a sustainable business model. And, and for us, that's the most significant uh, contribution I think we can make is understanding how to go big, how to go long, how to go local and making sure all of the pieces connect so that we've got something that works for all of the components or parts of society that we engage and work with. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark, for the strong words. Um, Arnaud, your company, IBIA, has been a champion or I would say uh, one of the first uh, to be so active and so vocal about uh, sustainability and the UNGC. 
Um, has sustainability sh helped shape your business success? Did it play a role? Did it help? Thank you, Patrick, for inviting me on this panel and uh, also um, very happy to be uh, sitting next to two big chief executives in, uh, in Africa and from uh, a global uh, standard. So yeah, um, I would like to say that uh, IBL is, um, is a merchant-based company. Uh, obviously, it's um, very linked to uh, the future of a small island, which is Mauritius. And uh, having said that, we'll, uh, we should make sure that uh, we are completely uh, aligned with, uh, with the development of this island. So uh, we were, at inception, uh, found a member of a global compact network for Mauritius and Indian Ocean. And we are really um, committed and dedicated to integrate all the sustainable uh, development goals uh, into uh, our day-to-day -day operation and providing um, a transparent account for our progress towards achieving them. The group went into a, a major uh, researching about six years, five years ago now, and we decided to set at that time a free, uh, I would say, pillars to be able to shape the future. Uh, one is uh, based on the digital transformation, uh, which obviously leads to optimization of resources, accelerate growth, and drive cons 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 customers' uh, engagement. The second pillar uh, is human capital, whereby uh, we want to strengthen the capabilities, enhance empowerment, and nurture the tal talents. And last but not least is the sustainability through a re reinforcement of our commitment towards the SDGs approach. So uh, we're still uh, obviously a, a long way because uh, there's a lot to do. And uh, we're probably coming from a base which is uh, really, really low. Uh, but uh, we've decided through a partnership with an international research-based organization to uh, which obviously help companies embed sustainability across their operation and decision making. We have started a methodical and thorough analysis of a group, sustained by material evidence in order to devise and refine a pragmatic but impactful roadmap with enhanced circularity within the group. This assessment was believed or is believed to be important uh, while we are also reflecting on strategic development in some specific field. And I'll uh, take uh, two or three examples uh, whereby we are really uh, focused. Energy is, is probably one of a, of a major uh, theme for us. And uh, we've been uh, not uh, before uh, a few months ago, uh, engaging with uh, top-notch uh, strategists to help us reflect on uh, the, the development of non-fossil resources. So we've we've set up an IB board and uh, a, a dedicated management so that this uh, energy renewable energy strategy is is set. Uh, quickly in Mauritius, but also in the nearby region. Nearby region, we are talking about Maldives, Réunion, uh, Madagascar, and East Africa. We also have a foundation uh, in the group. It's called the Fondation Joseph Largesse, which uh, includes capacity building in order to set up and deliver impactful projects uh, where also all the SDG strategy uh, of a group are embedded. Um, we are, uh, you know, as, as a motion company, uh, we are looking at uh, for our development in Africa, and we should be uh, respectful of our people, the planet, and the governance. And this is uh, not negotiable for, for my group, uh, at least. The COVID situation, uh, which we all uh, have suffered, and we probably coming out slowly but surely, um, has put an even stronger focus uh, on the importance of uh, the integration of sustainability within our system. So we are now more uh, agile and uh, responding, able to respond to unexpected events. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Arnaud. And I'm, I'm very sorry because I have a please wrap up message on my uh, on my screen because yeah, I would love so to ask you 20 questions each. Uh, talk about, you know, what uh, uh, what Naspers is doing on the women empowerment. I know you're very active in the, on that front. I would love to talk about, uh, you know, what Anglo is doing on the uh, on the green, uh, the greening of um, of its operations and the countries and so on. I just had maybe if one of you can give me in one sentence you are big firms, you are models in Africa in a way in, uh, in, in embracing uh, UNGC. What would you say to smaller African companies who may see that as you know, a bit of administrative work and why is it so important to actually embrace sustainability and join this type of initiatives? I won't have answer, uh, time for three answers. So the, anyone will be the fastest on that and in a uh, in few seconds. Uh, if I if I may, um, I would say to 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 those uh, to those small entrepreneurs, don't cut corners uh, without a strong governance, without a strong sustainability development objectives. Um, your businesses won't survive. And uh, hearing Mark Anglo is 140 years, uh, IBL will turn 200 years in um, in a couple of of, uh, of years, in, in seven years. So um, don't cut corners and uh, it will bring you more and more value uh, long term. Fully agree. It's a, it's a good investment to make, and I think it's an investment you cannot not, making, not make now uh, in today's world. Thank you very much to the three of you, uh, and very sorry we have so much, uh, we had to, 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 to be so short, but thanks for your engagement. As I said, I think uh, uh, it's the leading organizations of Africa which will drive these new business practices, and clearly uh, you have a role to play, I would say, beyond uh, your, uh, your organization. Thank you so much. And so now let me uh, introduce Kevin Frey, the CEO of Generation Unlimited, UNICEF. So another UN organization, so we heard government leaders, we heard the private sector, and now we heard another UN organization that works closely with the UNGC, and in a way represents uh, the, the voice of the youth and the entrepreneurs, uh, and the importance also of education. So um, over to you, Kevin. Thank you so much, Patrick, uh, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, it's an honor for me to participate in the launch of the UN Global Compact's first ever Africa strategy, and thank you, Sanda, for the invitation. I've been inspired listening to today's speakers who have articulated a sustainable future for Africa characterized by inclusive growth that's driven by the private sector, that's taking an approach of conscious capitalism and is built on partnership between the public and the private sector. And I'm excited to continue to work with Sanda and the UN Global Compact in the months and the years to come to ensure that Africa's young people are key drivers of the sustainable economic growth and social development that we've heard about today. Generation Unlimited is a multi-stakeholder partnership that mobilizes titans of industry, leaders from the UN and government, heads of state, and youth with youth to achieve its mission. Its mission is to skill and connect the world's 1.8 billion youth to opportunities, opportunities for employment, for entrepreneurship, and for social impact. I was so happy to see His Excellency Oluyemi Osinbajo, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here today, who launched just two months ago, Generation Unlimited in Nigeria. And I'd like to thank His Excellency for his continued commitment for young people. I don't think it's going to surprise you that I want to use my few minutes today to talk about the centrality of young people to the future prosperity of Africa. With 60% of people under the age of 25, Africa has the world's youngest population, and the number of young people is projected to double by 2055. From those young people, an estimated 11 million young Africans enter the workforce every year, but only about 4 million new jobs are created. This is a challenge that has to be addressed, and fast. While COVID-19 crippled much of the world, including Africa, it hit youth particularly hard. Youth lost jobs and income at nearly twice the rate of adults. And that's not surprising because according to the International Labor Organization, 95% of African youth are employed in the informal sector. But despite these challenges, as we've heard today, Africa offers tremendous opportunities to build profitable businesses of all sizes, entrepreneurial startups, 
medium-sized organization in large global multinationals. And many of these businesses are being built by young people. I'm Canadian, so I love to quote the greatest ice hockey player of all time, a player named Wayne Gretzky, who scored more goals than any other player in history. And when asked about his success, he famously described it in one line. He said, I skate to where the puck is going, not to where it's been. And with an estimated 400 companies with over a billion dollars of revenue, a resource-rich land that's larger than China, Europe, and the United States combined, a market where consumers spend $1.4 trillion annually, which is bigger than India's consumer market, and the world's youngest and fastest growing population, I think it's fair to say that Africa is where the puck is going. The future of opportunity is in Africa. And that's why the UN Global Compact's Africa strategy comes at such an opportune time. And that's why I'd like to call on businesses today to invest in the UN Global Compact's Africa strategy. Now is the time to capitalize on Africa's quest to build profitable and sustainable enterprises based in responsible business practices. Technology is advancing rapidly across the continent, making it fertile ground for innovation and entrepreneurship. And with such a large cohort of youthful Africans, especially young women, increasingly connected to the internet, Africa has all of the ingredients to become one of the world's most entrepreneurial continents. And what's particularly exciting is that nearly half of all millennial entrepreneurs in Africa are women. At Generation Unlimited, we see technology as an opportunity to drive job creation, entrepreneurship, and social impact, specifically in the digital and green economies. EdTech for digital skills, FinTech, AgTech, we heard about InsureTech earlier today. In my opinion, there is no smarter course for businesses than to invest in youth and women in Africa. It's just good business. And the UN Global Compact strategy makes that clear. Together with the UN Global Compact and the private sector, Gener Generation Unlimited wants to partner to prepare youth, especially young women, for the future of work and connect them with opportunities for dignified livelihoods. Today's youth hold our shared future in their hands. And with the largest generation of young people in history driving economic and social change, in partnership with the private sector and the United Nations Global Compact, future potential is truly unlimited. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin, Patrick, Puti, Mark, and Arnaud for your great insights and contributions. As the panel has clearly demonstrated, the UN Global Compact is uniquely positioned and equipped to support businesses on their sustainability journey. Guided by the 10 principles, we are proud of our ability to accelerate responsible business practices and public-private cooperation for meaningful change on the African continent. Our strategy serves as a call to action for businesses in Africa. We invite the private sector across the continent to step up and become strong pillars of sustainability and responsible business. Join us as we accelerate progress on the SDGs in this decade of action. Africa's future is well worth the investment and your partnerships. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Saudi Soul. We celebrate the United Nations Global Compact for uniting businesses all across the world. You inspire the private sector to adopt the 10 principles for sustainability. Congratulations on the launch of your Africa strategy. To all businesses in Africa, let us join hands with the Global Compact in their ambition. We thank you and live and die in Africa.